What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode where everybody is pacing around sort of nervously and I'm not sure why. They're just all over the place, so I'm thinking that what we need to do is just get out of here before the place explodes. I don't know why they're so uneasy, but I'm just glad that they're unhard at this point. Everybody's had a real hard dexterity since the zombie outbreak happened and it's made me feel a tad nervous. Let's continue forward, shall we? I think we've probably got a number of things to unload right here. In the previous episode, we've gone out and raided a little bit. We haven't really found anything that was super useful, but at the same time, it's all just extra stuff to throw into the pile. We needed to fix our refrigerator because unfortunately, it's just not cool right now it's acting very dickish and since it's acting dickish that means that we need to go through and make sure that we attitude adjust it so I think we need to go assign that once we've assigned the refrigerator I think we're gonna head on back to Austin and just see what we can accomplish right there I had been fiddling around it with it before we had lost our save and I think we can actually make it work where is the repair job on the refrigerator get as many people on that's gonna take 24 hours huh that's a pretty good chunk of time Throw as many people on this as you can. I'd like to see Todd off relaxation. Todd hasn't done a whole lot while he's been here. He can't help out with refrigerator repair. He needs mechanical skill. Okay, Todd. Well, then I'll put you back on shooting practice since that's all the... Oh, we've got you right here. That'll work. Eight hours is great. That means it'll be done by the end of the day, which is precisely the sort of time frame that I was looking for. Let's get back outside. We've got stuff to accomplish. We've got things to do, stuff to see. And so let's put our optical units to good use along with our feet. How about that? I think we're going to head to Austin today. That sounds pretty good. Down to Austin we go. Hopefully we don't have too many ridiculous events on the way down. I think with our survival skill, it allows you to avoid bad things. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it allows you to avoid bad things, but I've pretty much done all of Austin right here. I lost all this when we did our save. It'll be okay though, but if it seems like I have foresight or I know what's coming, that's going to be why, because this is basically the second time that I've played through all of this, so... It is what it is. Into Austin we go. Let's get everybody locked and loaded first. I want everybody on their gun of choice before we go inside because this place can be very, very dangerous and we don't really have the resistances to suffer long-term combat in here. We're going to have to end this very quickly while we can manage it. So let's go up the stairs. We'll see what's left. I'll know what floor we've been on. I'll point them out. I think we should be all right here though. Okay, straight through the double, quadruple, octuple doors, whatever those were. I didn't make a good count of them. I'm sure somebody will fill me in in the comments. If you want to count the doors, feel free and go for it. Let's move inside and see what we can isolate right here. It's going to take a bit for us to get upstairs, unfortunately, with the way that the stairs work. It's just, it is what it is. Are there further stairs over on this side? I wonder if some of the stairs work better than others. We got stuck on the stairs in one of the previous episodes, and it made me very, very nervous about our ascent to the heavens. There's our fourth character. Up we go. All right, so in we go. We're about to find out how much of this has been done and how much needs to be redone. Either way, at least the combats in here are engaging, and they're actually pretty aggressive. One of one, the ones that we have done is one that was already in the series, and so I accidentally did it twice, so that'll be pretty cool. What's better than doing it once? Doing it... What is this guy doing? What are you doing right now? I think that's Paul. I recognize his blue... Oh, never mind. He's got gray pants on, so that's Vic, I think. They've all got helmets on at this point, so I don't have the identifying mustaches, faces, or otherwise accessories to identify who's who. Have we been through here yet? We have. Okay, so this has already been run through. That's good, because it'll save us a little bit of time. This next stairwell is the one that's super janky, so I'm going to save before we go up it, just because it's a good idea. The way that I figured out how to fix this, it's odd, but I figured out a way to do this. If I can remember how I did it, I think I should be able to... So it was like right there, and then you got to take Troy. And now what you want to do is, who is this over here? This is Paul. So I need Paul to move up into here. We'll take Troy now. You got to keep them from reassembling. And then you should be able to go up the stairs. You bring him down to right there so that they're all stacked up on the same spot. And then if you could take Paul, it should work right here, I think. 
that should there we go see there's a little bit of finagling you've got to do with it and you got to get used to the way that it works did we do this room already all right so this room has already been done whether or not it'll show up on camera i'm not sure there was nothing to be concerned about nothing went wrong we basically slaughtered everybody in here we're not going to run into any fights that are going to be a major issue for a little while longer although i think it might be wise to break this door i think the fight on the next floor is the only one that we lost, and since I did it already, I'm going to tell you what we're up against. Several individuals with high-powered rifles, grenades, and all that other unfun stuff. We don't have any way to get rid of shock bombs or anything, so they are going to hit us with stun grenades as far as I remember. However, oh no, we killed this floor too. Damn, we've been up here. We've been all up in here. I'm going to break these doors once and for all because they're all glitched anyways. All of the doors inside Austin, you can like walk straight through them without any harm to yourself. I would try and avoid passing through solid objects. It seems like a great way to just like damage the inner frame. But in this game, hey, they try, they pass right through. They get their black hat on and it's all good. Let's go up the stairs. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird. Because people are inside the room. And you have to keep this from happening right here. So there's a counterattack for six damage against the Axe Man. And what we gotta do now is we gotta get Vic inside the room. Okay. So we can fire from here. I'm gonna go for the Merc Sniper since he's the most dangerous right now. So there's 60 points right there. The guys with the shields are bad, but we're gonna deal with them in a way which is fitting. I think it's a way that works. And so what I need for right now is to bash this door and you just don't want anybody in the position that the door occupies that's the biggest problem is it not letting me bypass my turn right now bypass my turn there we go we are going to take some damage from those 357s i think but if we can get oh it's my character that's getting shot all right that's fine i think our character can float it for right now i would say we all float down here but we're actually upstairs so that doesn't really work out i'm going to try and break this door as rapidly as possible so that everybody else can join the fight that leaves our character right up in the front. I'm going to get the spear out, and we're going to keep working on this guy. He does have some armor, but I think we can get the damage off. He's knocked out and bleeding out, and then I'm going to make a space so somebody else can step into the room. The axe does five points of damage, but we absorbed quite a bit of it. So that's good. Let's bring Paul on up. We're going to let him get two shots right here. There's 53 on the first shot. And then what looks like 141 on the second shot. Now against the guys with the shield, unfortunately we have no way to damage them. And so our strategy here is mostly going to involve... Let's move to there. I'm going to try and eliminate one of these at the minimum. Ah, he's not dead. He took 64 damage, but he's got a lot of health on him even though he's down already. Okay, so they've moved up. He's going to throw out a flash grenade, which is going to neutralize like half of our party. I'm going to go out of my way to kill a couple of these guys right here. And then we'll move Tweedles up to this spot and hope that they occupy with him. So there's the shot for four damage to Paul. Unfortunately, they are going after our guys who are down. I think you have an increased crit rate when you're laying prone like that. So all we can hope for is that in the next turn or two, they get back up. I don't know if it's random or if you make a toughness check or how that works. But when my characters are down, they don't seem to come back on the first turn. It's always like on the second. I'm going to go after, he's got a little shield. I don't think I can hurt either of these guys. They've got a big shield. Oh, wow, never mind. I hit him for 75. What am I talking about? We're all well dandy and good right there with an especial emphasis on the dandy because I got my fancy pants on right now. Always got to have the fancy pants on. They're gonna just going to counter blow each other over and over and over again. But that's the nice thing to do when somebody gives you a blow. To counter blow. Itch my face for a second because it's weirdly itchy all of a sudden. Then we're going to go straight ham mode on this dude right here for 61 damage. I don't know if ham is an acronym or how that works, but I love ham. Ham is delicious, especially when you cross it with honey or any other, like, drizzling sus like any drizzling substance, I guess. It's delicious. I used the wrong weapon right there, and it was all my fault. I think Paul got a double turn, though, strangely enough. So let's lay into these guys. He's taken 87 damage, so he's now down, which is good. That leaves us with Vic to deal damage and kill him, to get him on out of the way so we can line up a few more people right here. And I think this is the last guy on the floor. Nine points of damage right there. I think we should be able to... Ooh, 14. Maybe not. We may have to rest and relax a little bit right here, which has been sort of like the repeating motive or the repeating motif as I've been playing through this place. It seems to be... That as I go through, we kind of like fight our way through one floor, take too much damage, come back, fight our way through another floor. It's over and over and over again. So zero points of damage right there, and then a miss. This guy might have a tougher chin on him. 
Oh, never mind. 60 points of damage. Don't matter how tough your chin is when you got chin piercing bullets. So there we go. I think we need to back off that right there. We'll take a shot on him. Zero points of damage right there. Set that as an active. Zero points of damage. We're going to have to hope for crits right here because I think that's the only way that we're getting through. The knockdown might help us out though. Zero points of damage. Zero points of damage. So the shield still counts even though you're prone. I don't know if I brought that up. He's now down so that's going to end off our combat. And it's going to allow us to extricate ourselves from this particular nasty bout of melee. Let me get everybody reloaded before we go any further because obviously we're missing a whole bunch of health and a whole bunch of random ammunition pieces. We'll throw a bit of health on everybody. There we go. On this side. I'm going to take the spear to this guy. Down he goes. That's going to eliminate him as a force to be worried about. I don't think anybody here has anything that I want. And so I believe we shall continue our ascent. Now just in case we get caught on another stairwell, I'm going to save right here because... This place has been really, really buggy and really, really janky. And so the entire time I've been trying to keep myself protected. But you can never tell. You can never, ever tell. I figure we've got at least a few more floors. This is a big motel, though. It goes on for days. Oh, we made it to the roof access. There's a chopper. I think somebody had mentioned that when we were playing the game earlier. There's a locked door right here. Let's give it what for, shall we? And the what 4 we will give it is actually more of what 5 or what 37. We dealt a lot of damage to that thing. There's nobody in here. This is weirdly too quiet. And I don't know how to feel about it. We can't get through that door because it's indestructible. Oh, there's a door mechanism? Oh. Maybe we need a key card or something. Was it on the last floor? Let's have a look here. The door to the helipad is made of what appears to be bulletproof glass and electronically locked with a keycard mechanism. Hopefully there's a card around that can open this thing. We'll leave it alone. Well, is it in the penthouse maybe? We'll have to scan through here. We got ourselves a DVD player, so that's a plus. We'll bring our educational level on up to the next tier. I was trying to think right there. I was like, hmm, I already used the word level, so I have to find something that means level, but also interject it within the next... Oh, there it is, five seconds. I'm going to say tier. That works out perfectly fine. So it's not on this floor. Maybe it's with some of the bodies we left down there. Let's pick through them. I didn't see that any of them had like special names or anything like that. So I was not really paying attention though. This room is kind of scary. The Merc Lieutenant. Ah, there it is. He's got the key card. He's also got a long barrel magnum, which is quite the terrifying weapon. We'll throw as much of this in as we can. Along with the police shield, which is light and gives a ridiculous amount of resist. So that's pretty good if you've got a melee character you're trying to build. He didn't throw that incendiary grenade, which works out for us pretty well. The Merc Sniper, he's got a couple of commodity items and a sniper rifle, which is overloaded. No wonder he didn't take any shots at us. He put too many bullets in it. I bet it went clicking. He was like, I don't know what's wrong right now. I loaded it up just like it said in the manual, and it's still not working. This is weird. I take this back to the manufacturer, at least write a mean email or something just to make sure that it's working. But this is not going for me right now. Since we got the key card, let's go back up to the roof. And see what we have here. What's going to happen when I open this, I wonder? Swipe the key card. The light on the keypad turns green and there's an audible click of the door being unlocked. The helipad is now open. So you're the one killing all my men, huh? Good men. Good men. Had a lot of fun with this group. Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, and then we arrived here in Austin. You should have seen it. It was glorious. They gave us power and orders, and we only really needed one of those. Floor by floor, we rained bodies on those streets. Scream pop, scream pop. Set ourselves up as the rulers of everything you see here. Our own city. All we had to do was let those shit bags rot and take everything else. And then you came along, and well, it was tempting to get on that helicopter and leave. And I will, but first, I'm going to make it rain for one last time. Ow! What the hell gun is that? Hurt like hell, whatever it is. Okay, so we're going to have everybody pull back into here, I think. It might be our best chance of victory. Just sort of like corral them along the way and let them come one by one. We got a lot of grenades and stuff too, so I think we can make it work. We may have to watch out for the serious damage that gun's dealing though. Not the snack machine. Go back over here. I need you to line up on the side of the door, just in case. You, I'm going to have you throw, what is that, tear gas? 
I don't know what this is, but hey, I'll give it a go. Okay, so it's tear gas, and then we'll step back into the room. We'll let them come to us. I don't think we're going to get out of it that easy, but it's worth a try at least. Give him some nerve gas. Let him have it. And then keys. We'll give him a shot. He took 82 points of damage. He's badly wounded. That means that it's probably in our best interest to get rid of him before he gets back up because he's got a serious home wrecker of a weapon. So 37 points of damage right there. Still not enough to lay him low. But we got somebody in position to use a grenade. And so maybe right there. 17 points of damage. Come on, bring it home. There it is. And so we got rid of the most dangerous individual in that group, I think. For right now, I'm going to have him heal himself. This is getting real intense right now. I'm glad we decided to come back. I, I realized that maybe not coming back was a bad idea after people told me what was actually in here. So I figured, eh, hey, we'll come back. We'll check it out and we'll get it going. I don't know if we're going to quit the game right now because I've heard that you get one of the endings if you take these guys out. But beyond that, I don't really know what else is going to happen. We do have guys with shields, so we need to watch out for that. But we've got what looks like 78 damage away right there if I'm doing my math properly. We'll step him on out. Let's grenade the rest of these pricks. There it is. The Merc Heavy took zero damage. I don't know how to deal with him just yet. I'm still thinking on it. He's got shields and all kinds of other nasty business, so... If he's got anything else to go along with that, we may have to suffer a little bit for our success here. Shots away. We've got another individual down, so we don't need to worry about him any further. Keep Tweedle time back. I'm going to use him as an elimination mechanism for the enemies that surround us. On this side, let's continue. The Merc Commando. The Merc Heavy is slightly wounded. Let's handle the Medic first, I guess. So the Medic is knocked out and bleeding out. We'll start stepping into the room and seeing who we can hurt in here. We'll deal with the big guy last, I guess. I don't know. I took an ability when I leveled up. We lost the footage, but I took an ability when we leveled up that allows us all to crit like over and over and over again, which is pretty sweet. Not over and over and over again, I guess, but it allows us to crit a lot, and I like it. It's a good attack. 24 more damage right there. I'm going to swap out with Paul, and then we're going to step in a bit further. At least Tweedle time in a disadvantageous position, but it can't be helped for right now. They're going to get back up, and hopefully they don't have too bad a DACA. We should be all right. If they continue to counter with grenades or whatever else, we may have problems. They're all dazed, though, and one of them, I mean, three out of the five of them are down. I want this helicopter for sure. I'm going to add this to my own personal... Oh, they flashbombed their own guy who was already down, and so maybe that wasn't even a flashbomb. That looks like it might have been a frag. Oh, well. Merc Commando, get dealt with. I don't know what this guy's rocking right here. But my suggestion is that we eliminate all of these guys and then step in so that we can have more people bearing fire against this guy. I like to exonerate, I'm sorry, I like to exemplify my attacks with the spirit of the bear. It's just part of what I do here. Oh, at least we're able to deal some damage, so that's good. Whenever I go up against anybody with riot gear and a shield, I get worried we're not actually going to be able to hurt him. I don't think that's a 38. I th I'm sorry, I don't think that's a 45. I think or a 357. I think he's got himself the really, really good version of the 38, the special version or whatever it is. Troy's back up, so it's time to get some payback. Because we've been borrowing a little bit too much hurt from these guys. Zero points of damage. I don't know how this is going to go. We may, we may have to think this one out a bit. A little bit of damage right there, but it's only eight. It's only eight. Hopefully the snipey will still hurt him. That shield gives a whole lot of resistance. It's a scary thing to go up against, but we got 122 points of damage right there. Additive crit, because he was already on the ground, I guess. Zero damage right there. Just keep unloading on him as much as you can. I feel like I'm playing Payday right now and a heavy just came in, or a tank, or whatever the hell they were called. I'm going to move in over to here. We'll see if we can get our swipes in. There it is. We got him. So let's finish off keys. Keys is dead. Dibs on their stuff. Yeah, I doubt it. This guy's probably got something amazing on him right here. He's got a stash key card. This is a piece of heavy-duty plastic with a magnetized strip. A key card used by the hotel to securely lock doors. This one, however, seems like it's connected to something a little more jury-rigged. In neat printing, it has the word stash roughly jotted on an impermanent marker. Okay, an antique lighter. What does that do? Oh, that's the lighter for what's-her-name downstairs, although I'm a little bit concerned we can't go down and actually, like, use it. A laser-sighted MS4. Don't we already have that? This might have been pointless. I don't know. We'll bring it back with us. But we already have laser sighted, laser -sighted MS4, so... Eh, whatever. Can't carry that much, huh? What's so heavy right here? Oh, the rations. 
What are the rations costing us? Oh, 36 value on each of those? Holy hell. That's a lot. So each one weighs 10 pounds. We're going to have to load somebody like Tweedletime up with that one. Unless he's already full up, which he is. He can't carry it all either. He can get that in, though. We'll take those and we'll take the riot helmet because the riot helmet's really, really good. But everything else is subpar, not something that I'm really too excited about. I thought there was going to be a unique gun up in here, and there was not. Unfortunately, there was not, unless it's on this Merc Heavy over here, but I don't think it will be. Let's investigate this helicopter and see what happens. All right, so down goes the enemy. What you got for me, buddy? Oh, he's just got riot gear? Well, never mind then. Go and get your riot gear. I'm a Five Iron Frenzy fan, and so whenever I hear the word riot gear, it makes me think of that. What's inside of this? Nothing. Probably some computer stuff. A military-grade laptop. What grade does the military get? I would assume that the grade, they would have to get a grade of C-plus or higher, right? Otherwise, they would cease to be like the military. Eh. Then they would become like a militia. Gotta get a pretty good grade if you're gonna be in the military. Let's grab those because they'll be useful later on. Not as many bullets as I expected. I was hoping we would get a big... Oh, my God. Yeah, this location seems to be a little bit roughly popular. You think there's a couple zombies in Austin? Holy hell. Wow. That's troublesome. Let's get up in here and see what we can find. In the Merc's bag. Got some guns, some more rations, like a ton of loot. I'll probably loot these off camera over the course of the weekend because as of right now, I think it might be a little bit of a waste of time to try and grab all this stuff. However, since we're good to go... That fuel tank, what's it got? 8.5 gallons. I'm a little bit worried about taking the lighter back to that girl because I don't want her to like get stuck to us again like she did before. Maybe I'll save before I try it, but still... Might be worth the attempt. My name is Slattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all in future episodes. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi-do.